So there's a little bit of a challenge when it comes to learning or teaching heat pump wiring. And the challenge is, is that there's so many different variations of how things are wired out there with different brands that it, it's kind of inaccurate for me to focus in on any one of them and tell you that's how heat pump wiring works. So what I did with today's video is I tried to focus in on some very core principles that every heat pump system has to do in order for it to work. So the first principle that's always going to be in play in every single split heat pump system is that you're going to have a step down transformer inside of the air handler that will take 240 volts, usually 120 on each leg, for a total of 240 on what's called the primary side of the transformer it's going to step it down to 24 volts and it's going to send out a 24 volt wire that um, basically becomes the low voltage control power that we need for the entire system now every system is going to take that 24 volts and run it through some kind of fuse onto some kind of a board so it might be a 3 amp fuse it might be a 5 amp fuse you might see different types of fuses sometimes the fuse will be wired in before it gets to the control board sometimes the fuse might be on the control board but either way it's all the same thing after it goes through a fuse it's going to go to a r terminal on a control board now this might be an integrated control board on older systems you might have a fan relay board um, but it's again the same thing and that R terminal it could be a spade terminal it could be a screw terminal or it might just be a red stranded copper wire that you tie into but regardless of how it's set up this is the basic principle that's always going to be in play and this also applies to straight cool air handlers it applies to furnaces this is a pretty universal setup right there now every heat pump system has to take that 24 volts on that R terminal on that control board and send it to two different places. One is the R terminal on your thermostat, the other is the R terminal on your defrost control board. Now there's four different ways I could think of doing this right off the top of my head. I could wire two separate red wires into that R terminal on the control board in the air handler, run one up to the R terminal on my thermostat, the other to the R terminal on my defrost control board. I can run one wire off the R terminal on the control board and the air handler, wire nut them together outside of the air handler, and then run separate wires to the thermostat R and the defrost control board R terminal. I can run a single wire from the R terminal on the control board and air handler straight up to the thermostat, use the R terminal on the thermostat as kind of like a junction, and then run a wire from the thermostat R to the defrost control board R, which is something you're probably not going to see out there. Or I could do it in a way I could pretty much guarantee you, you're probably never going to see is from the R terminal control board straight out to the R terminal defrost control board. Use that R terminal as a jumper and go right up to the R terminal and the thermostat. It doesn't matter which way it is. The point is, is that we're getting 24 volts at all three of these R terminals. Now another principle you're going to see on just about any system are common terminals of some kind. You're going to have a common on the control board and the air handler, common on your thermostat, common on your defrost control board. Now all these commons, they have to kind of make their way back to the common on the control board so it can get back to the common on the transformer. Because whenever you're sending power out to these devices, it needs a path to come back. So the transformer is going to send power out, out to the R terminal control board, out to the R terminals on the thermostat, defrost control board, and then back to the control board and the common on the transformer. Now, just like the wiring, there's different ways to wire the R terminals all together. You did, it's the same thing for the common terminals. You might see a lot of different variations. The only exception here is on the thermostat. The only time you actually need a common from your thermostat back to your control board is when you're running like a smart thermostat that uh, requires a dedicated 24 volt source to charge it. So any thermostat that doesn't run on batteries is going to need a common. You don't need a common on a thermostat that does run on batteries because any circuit this thermostat connects to is already wired into common somewhere else. Uh, the defrost control board, however, you do need a common running back. A lot of times that might be a black wire. Some guys might use a different color, but the point here, the takeaway is that you have to know that all that 24 volts has to find its way back to the transformer somehow, and that's what we're looking for. Now, every heat pump thermostat has four major duties that it has to perform. It has to be able to turn on the blower in your air handler. It has to be able to pull in the contactor on the outdoor condensing unit to turn the compressor and the condenser fan motor on. It has to be able to position the reversing valve in the outdoor unit in either heating or cooling position. And it has to be able to turn on the heat strips in the air handler under certain circumstances. 
Now, every heat pump thermostat is going to perform several of these tasks simultaneously on every single call for heating or cooling. So, one of the first tasks we talked about is that it's going to turn on the blower motor. And it does this by taking the 24 volts that we sent from the air handler control board to our terminal up to the R terminal thermostat. The thermostat closes a switch between the R and G terminal, it takes that 24 volts from R, sends it to G. Now, you're going to have probably a green wire connecting from G on your thermostat to G on the control board in your air handler, and that is going to turn on the blower motor. Now, internally on that control board, that G is going to connect to common which makes its way back to the transformer common which completes the circuit. Now the other task we mentioned is that the thermostat has to be able to turn on the outdoor condensing unit. So just like it turns on the fan motor, it has to also turn on the condensing unit outside and that is done by switching a connection closed between the R terminal on a thermostat and the Y terminal on our heat pump. So that's the diagram we're looking at here. Now the main difference between a regular thermostat and a heat pump thermostat is on a regular thermostat, that Y terminal is only powered during cooling mode. Whereas on a heat pump thermostat, that Y terminal is always being powered in both heating and cooling mode because on a heat pump system, the compressor and the condenser fan motor is always running in both modes. So that is the main difference between a regular and a heat pump thermostat. So that Y terminal is always powered. So it's not a cooling terminal it is a compressor and condenser fan motor terminal so as we can see here it does the same thing as turning on our blower motor it takes the power off of that R terminal and the air handler control board sends it up to the R terminal thermostat thermostat closes a switch between R and Y that 24 volts travels down usually a yellow wire to the Y terminal back at the air handler control board junctions off goes to the Y terminal on defrost control board and from here it will work through to the contactor which pulls in uh, turns the unit on the common comes back to the air handler control board and eventually back to the transformer to complete the circuit. Now, earlier I mentioned in the air handler, you might have an integrated control board or a fan relay board. Now, the difference between the two is on a fan relay board, you don't actually have a Y terminal on there. So in a system like that, you will see the wiring going straight from the Y terminal on your thermostat to your defrost control board. It'll bypass the air handler. Now it might make the wiring connection between the thermostat and the control board at the air handler somewhere, like right outside of it, but it's not actually going inside. But the goal is the same either way, is to get 24 volt power out to that Y terminal and defrost control board to pull that contactor in. Now another task for our thermostat is to position the reversing valve in the proper position for whatever mode it's in. Now on a heat pump thermostat, uh, there you have an O terminal and a B terminal. And I have a video that kind of goes deeper into uh, what these terminals are um, and how they work. But for the most part, your O terminal in a heat pump thermostat for most systems um, outside of Reamer Rudd is the O terminal plays the same role as a Y terminal does in a regular straight cooling thermostat. So this O terminal is for the reversing valve to be pushed into a cooling position and this O terminal only gets powered in cooling mode. So very similar to a straight cool thermostat um, on the Y terminal. Um, only on a heat pump thermostat the O terminal takes the same role. So once again we have a very similar wiring arrangement as to uh, turning on our contactor through the Y terminal on the thermostat. We have our 24 volts coming from our air handler's R terminal up to the R on the thermostat. The thermostat closes the switch between R and O, sends that 24 volts out to the O terminal at the air handler um, integrated control board, jumpers off to the O on the defrost control board, makes its way to the reversing valve, common back to the transformer to complete the circuit and just like the circuit we went over with the y terminal and pulling in the contactor you're also going to see a variation where you don't have o terminals on a fan relay board once again so you'll see the same thing you'll see the o terminal juncturing outside of the air handler for example and going straight out to the control board without ever tying into the fan relay board but it's the same principle. The goal is to get 24 volts out to that O terminal to put the reversing valve in its cooling position. Now the other 
video that I made that goes into these O and B terminals is that on Riemann Rudd systems, the reversing valve defaults into a cooling mode. So on those particular systems, you don't need to send 24 volts out um, when the thermostat is calling for cooling. So you're not going to have this power here on this O at all on those particular systems. But on most others, um, you do need power for that reversing valve and cooling position off of that O terminal. So all the functions, the three functions that I went over so far, they don't particularly happen in any particular order. They all sort of happen simultaneously. You might have a few second delays worked into the system somehow, but what you're looking at here are all the connections the thermostat makes in a cooling mode. So you have power going from the R to O, R to G, and R to Y to turn all those components on at the same time so the system functions in cooling mode. Now what we're looking here is the same thing. These are all the thermostat connections made in cooling mode on ream and rud systems. And you notice the O terminal is not powered because as I said, on these particular systems, the reversing valve defaults into the cooling position. So you don't have to power it to put it there. It just defaults in that position automatically without any power going out to it. This also, by the way, happens to be the same exact connections made on a thermostat for heating mode in all other systems outside of Riemann Rudd. Uh, train, Carrier, Goodman, it's the same exact setup in heating versus cooling on Riemann Rudd. And once again, the reason why is because the reversing valve defaults into the heating position on all these other units, the Train, the Carrier, the Goodmans. So in heating mode, we don't need to send power out to the reversing valve because it's already in a default heating position. And on the Riemann Rudd systems, we don't need to send power out in cooling mode because it's already defaulting in the cooling position without power. Now, here are all the connections made on a heat pump thermostat on these Riemann Rudd systems in heating mode. You'll notice that the B terminal now is powered to get that reversing valve from its default cooling position where it doesn't need power to its heating position where it does need power. So that's enough of that. Let's move on. Let's get into the heat strips. If you still find that all confusing, I have another video that kind of goes into it. I'll link it in the description below. Now, heat pump system as a whole only turns on the heat strips in the air handler under three circumstances. One is going to be during auxiliary heat mode, one will be during emergency heat mode, and the final will be during defrost cycles. Now the thermostat only handles the first two. Uh, the thermostat has no clue when the system is in defrost mode, so that signal has to come from the defrost control board rather than the thermostat. So we'll cover the first two, then we'll move on to the defrost control board to see how that works. Auxiliary mode on a heat pump system occurs when the system is already in heating mode. So you're going to have the G terminals and the Y terminals are already going to be powered. The system's already going to be running in heating mode. Um, and the auxiliary mode will kick in when you have a fairly large temperature difference between room temperature and set point temperature. So if the room temperature is 65 degrees, you put your thermostat up to 72 degrees, that seven degree temperature differential will cause the thermostat to activate the auxiliary mode to turn on the heat strips just to add a little extra heat to help out the heat pump system to shrink that seven degree gap much quicker. So once the temperature difference between room and set point drops below like four or five degrees, it gets down to like three degrees, the temperature will break the connection between R and auxiliary terminal, the heat strips will shut down, and the system will continue running in strictly heat pump mode until the temperature is satisfied. So when that auxiliary mode is activated, the 24 volts will go from our R terminal to our auxiliary. It'll run up to the air handle control board on a W terminal into a relay on the heat strips. When the relay is energized, it'll close a switch that allows the high voltage to run through, activate the heat switch, and the 24 volts will then continue on beyond the relay back to the transformer comp. Now, just like with Y terminals or O terminals, sometimes you'll have a fan relay board that doesn't have a W terminal either, but the same principle applies. We need to get that power from auxiliary to the relay in the heat strip. So a lot of times that might just be wired directly to there, but it's the same principle, the same goal. 
Now, emergency heat is exactly the same thing as auxiliary heat. The only difference is it's going through the E-terminal rather than auxiliary terminal. So the main difference between these two modes is auxiliary is automatic. The thermostat will turn it on and off based on temperature differentials, where the emergency mode, you have to manually turn that on on the thermostat. So there's a switch on the thermostat that says emergency heat, and when you turn that on, it'll close the connection between R and E, and it'll do the same exact thing. It'll turn on the E strips. Now that mode typically isn't used unless there's a problem with the heat pump system. It's not working properly. You need to get heat into the house. But these two terminals are so identical that we don't need two wires ran up to the air handler to turn on heat strips. Um, a lot of times, because they do exactly the same thing, you will actually see a jumper between E and auxiliary with just one wire going up to do the job. And that's fine because both terminals do the exact same thing. There's really no point in running two different wires for that purpose. So I don't want to jump into a 40 minute video here. So I'm just going to wrap this up right here for now as part one of this fundamental uh, series. And in the next one, we'll dive into the defrost control board and get more into that wiring on the outdoor unit. Thanks for watching.